Hi, Jonathan York from Bay Financial Partners, uh, looking at the investment markets. Obviously, all eyes on the US-China trade talks, um, or sort of lack of trade talks, if you like. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, that process has sort of appeared to have broken down. Uh, President Trump announced that 25% uh, tariffs would go on uh, just over $200 billion worth of goods last Friday. Um, China has retaliated uh, with looking at uh, tariffs on around $60 billion worth of goods coming in on the 1st of July. Uh, so, sorry, excuse me, 1st of June. Now, quite interesting when you actually look at the numbers, uh, the US uh, imports uh, over $500 billion worth of goods from China. China imports uh, about $190 billion worth of goods from the US. So despite President Trump sort of saying that, uh, you know, the U.S. is in a very strong position and, you know, has a good negotiating platform here, um, you know, certainly looking at the numbers, um, it, it's clear that uh, the U.S. imports obviously a lot more from China. Um, obviously, China as well will look at uh, hitting the U.S. pretty hard in terms of the agricultural sector. That could be politically pretty damaging and embarrassing for President Trump as well. So it is just going to be interesting to see if it's going to be a long protracted uh, trade war. You know, if it is and the U.S. economy does start to suffer, then, uh, you know, potentially going into 2020, the election year, if the U.S. economy is starting to slow down, people are starting to lose their jobs, that could be one, you know, pretty embarrassing for the president, but also pretty interesting to sort of try and sell to the U.S. public that he's making America great, doing, you know, a good job out there and really putting America first. Because while in his eyes he may be putting America first and sort of doing what he thinks right for, for the US, if you're losing your jobs and you can't pay your mortgage or your bills, it's pretty tough to take. So it will be a pretty interesting, uh, you know, sort of balancing act to see how that sort of plays through. You know, while it's going to be pretty uh, too soon, really, on the next sort of employment data coming out uh, in uh, early June uh, to see the impact on the U.S. economy, certainly maybe, you know, sort of two or three months down the road, you'd say it will be interesting to see. And also as well to see uh, any sort of comments that come out from the Fed as well. Now, certainly when President Trump announced uh, the latest round of tariffs, uh, you know, the U.S. market opened up pretty, uh, pretty hard, pretty low, um, over 600 point fall on the Dow. Uh, that's been recovered about half today, but I say it's just going to be interesting to see how it does sort of all play through. You know, most analysts and uh, research houses still expect a deal to be done. And I say it's just going to be interesting to see how both sides can appear to get to a deal. Uh, without appearing to have given in to both sides. Now, interesting, uh, there is a G20 coming up and uh, potentially President Trump and President Xi um, could meet at that meeting. And again, so it would just be interesting to see the sort of um, back channels talk that are taking place to see uh, what sort of deal can get done. Because despite the rhetoric coming out of the US, a deal does need to take place for the US economy.
Also interesting as well that, uh, you know, the Trade Secretary, Larry Kudlow, as, uh, you know, is on tape now saying that, uh, you know, look, although uh, President Trump saying that uh, China is paying for the tariffs and, you know, it's great collecting these tariffs, the end payer really is the U.S. companies and U.S. really, in reality, is the U.S. consumer. So it could be a pretty tough election sale, you know, if the consumer is paying more for their goods, um, coming under a little bit of pressure, maybe the uh, job market not quite as strong. I'd say it would just be very interesting to see how they sort of all play through. Oil on the back of, you know, potentially slower global growth has come off a little bit, but still holding above that uh, $60 on uh, WTI. No fresh news on Brexit uh, that sort of just rambles on and, you know, it's, it's very tough to see where a deal is going to come from and how they're going to manage to uh, sort of get around the obstacles that are out there and for, the, uh, for the UK. Australian election as well is in full swing and it's just going to be very tight to see how that sort of plays through. It does look really pretty uh, too close to call at uh, present. Here in New Zealand, coming up to the end of uh, Kiwi Saver, uh, 30th of June. Um, just interesting to check those balances to make sure you've contributed enough to get that maximum tax credit. Uh, if you're unsure on what those numbers are, call us on 0800 867 323 or go to the website www.bayfinancialpartners.co.nz. New Zealand government still under quite a bit of pressure out there. Uh, the teachers are the latest for uh, potentially uh, damaging strikes on pay negotiations. Also as well, a lot of their cornerstone policies are really sort of um, crumbling out there. Um, you've got Kiwi Bill that uh, is, is currently under review and certainly nowhere near meeting, uh, meeting the targets. And it's just gonna be interesting to see how that does sort of play through. You've also got uh, the uh, free tertiary education as well. Those numbers are way below target. Um, you know, potentially there's a little bit of uh, money sitting around that was allocated for free uh, tertiary education, but just hasn't been taken up. And all this is wait. We wait to see what the uh, the next budget is going to be. It's supposed to be a well well being budget, and I say it's just going to be interesting to see how it does sort of play through. As the government is pretty much halfway through its uh, first term here. Yeah. Now, obviously, after the surprise cut last week from the Reserve Bank, um, analysts and economists now are sort of potentially looking at a further cut in sort of 2020. That would take the uh, OCR down to at least 1.25. Uh, but more interestingly is the longer term projections where you know, you're looking at uh, sort of rates at, at this level or lower for the next sort of two to three years. While that's obviously good for, uh, for borrowers and sort of the uh, housing market and mortgages, and et cetera, um, you know, the flip side of that is that it's pretty damaging for deposit uh, uh, makers out there because obviously they're getting less uh, returns. Now on the fixed interest side, there's a vector bond in the marketplace, six years fixed, uh, 3.45 minimum rate. Now, if you're interested in that, call us on 0800 So if you are looking for some income options and want to discuss what alternatives are available, say call us on 0800 or go to the website www.bayfinancialpartners.co.nz 
lots of interesting articles and we we'll look forward to speaking to you soon.